Welcome to Bonehead Weekly. Gentlemen, and we use that term loosely, you wanted to do a show about monkeys. Am I correct? You wanted to do a show about monkeys, too. Well, here's the thing. Are they apes? Are there monkeys? Are we doing I, gorillas? I, we are doing I don't all... understand the assignment. We gave we... ourselves the assignment, and I could, I just started freaking out. We've already done one about, like, gorillas, right? We did one that was... No. 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 I was... So I'm pretty, pretty sure, sure I did a show tail. about monkeys. Was that with my other family? Must have been. We didn't do an episode about monkeys. Or <laughs> apes. Or gorillas. We did... Call, we. Did we talk? We talked about Kong at some point. Yeah, that's what I mean. Maybe it's all run together. For well, me. But and, Kong and I want to. Can we agree that Kong is the ultimate monkey movie? How about Ape Planet movie? of the Apes? No, I, King Kong. I don't get me wrong. Planet of the Apes is amazing, but I know Mark Wahlberg, man. Yeah. Mm. Never forget. Mm. No, but um, yeah. When I when I just assumed when we were talking about monkeys, we were talking about all primates. We were doing that. An educated classification. Well, so, any ed, any classification we would do would be uneducated. Yes. So I, yeah, I am doing all pride. I did. I did not stick to just monkeys. Monkeys. Well, David, I can't get these headphones on my head. I, I, watching. I, yeah, probably probably shouldn't move on to world domination till you've mastered headphones. Where did the chimp go? The help of this shit. I'm just saying <laughs> he's back there banging the Kool Aid man. You think so? Look at him. He's between his legs. Joe froze. Oh, I thought Joe froze again. I'm like, no, we're recording. I didn't freeze. Are you there? I'm trying to get these stupid headphones to work. How are they working for you? They're not. That's because they're not on your ears, dumbass. (laughs) Yeah. They're not meant for neck wearing. They're on my head now. They're they're really big. I don't think Joe knows how headphones work. I kind of do. Now, so he's t- so what's happening is me and James are talking, and rather than listen to us talk, he's playing new kids on the block and those those uh, Princess Leia headphones. Oh 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 oh! No, I think we have to stop stuff. now, or you owe them a dime. I ain't giving them sons of bitches any dimes. <laughs> <laughs> I gave them dimes when I had to go see them in concert. <laughs> oh, and the people that still do it, not to be judgy, but totally judging. Oh, All right. judging. Judging, yeah, and also if you're going to, I guess everybody's got their thing, but Backstreet Boys, New Kids on the Block, 96 degrees Fahrenheit. Who else is there? Uh, in sync, uh, if you're going on one of those cruises, you are not allowed to make fun of the people who are doing the Marvel or the Star Wars cruise or what have you. I'm just amazed you named all of those. Oh, well, yeah, Joe's yeah. not a Joe's not a fan. I am a total fanboy. Did anybody see where Tommy Lee posted a picture of his of his Wang on Twitter? No, no, I don't. I it don't started, follow those websites. Well, Joe, hold, but thank you it's for not, me know that you, you follow do. Twitter, motherfucker. I can get an answer out of you out of Twitter before uh, I get a text message. Uh, Chad, but I don't. Chad I don't follow. Up. I don't yeah. follow those particular accounts that you follow, sir. Your Twitter only fans or whatever weirdness you have. Well, the, By the way, way, I don't follow and, Tommy and, Lee. And, and here's here's how you get a response from James. If you ever Twitter or or a man named Phil. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know. Phil doesn't talk to me anymore. <laughs> so I have been cut out He's of all that. He's a national key. treasure. He, <laughs> yes. Well, he has locked me up. So in all fairness, it's only because I say it's Phil, to aggravate Craig. Phil never had tetanus that we know of. So how about maybe Phil is tetanus? So yeah. So monkeys. I wanted to get back to Tommy Lee's show. Why it was blowing up my Facebook profile thing? Are you literally newsfeed with ladies Joe talking putting, about it? Joe was putting his phone in his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I have an easy gag reflex. I don't think that would be. A, I don't think that sh- I shouldn't do that. Oh God, I can't believe I had that jo- made that joke. <laughs> Why you've made worse? Uh, have I? Yeah, it wasn't that bad. Hey, the problem is that Joe kept See, doing this. So the joke is flicking his dick. I don't think that works. James, yes. you need to you need some more uh zooming in, Joe. Zooming in. Oh no, that would be scary. Did we kill it? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know anything that you're talking about because seriously, this is all news to me. Evidently, 
I don't follow the white right website. Joe, so Joe, right Joe zoomed in. Joe zoomed in too much. He goes, "Wait, is that a vein or the Rocky Mountains?" <laughs> <laughs> it's a topographical map. <laughs> so anyway, we're talking monkey movies. There's not a ton of them I like, guys. I mean, BJ and was... the Bear is a show. And it pretty much, they should have stopped the Emmys after that. Once again, I, somebody else said that. I'm still on a joke. But, yeah, pretty much after BJ and the Bear, give that show an Emmy, and then every year just go, nobody be it this year. Real so. quick, before uh, Chad uh, speaks, it won an EGAT. <laughs> <laughs> Educated joke after Tommy Lee Schlong vein. <laughs> the vein's bigger than my dick, Chad. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not saying much. A oh. caterpillar can say that. You mean that hungry fat one? Yeah. No. no. <laughs> Regular top. <laughs> Ragler. Regular top. Ragler. All right, dude. Rimbo the Mankey. What were you going to say? I completely forgot. <laughs> oh, I was going to say uh, uh, one, one, one uh, that made my list is not a movie. So, what is it? Is it BJ and the Bear? Because it won't no. be God. It's, I've never I've never seen BJ and the Bear. I yeah, honestly I don't. I, I did not know. It. I did not know in my twenties that that bear was not an actual bear. If see BJ and the Bear, see Chad, you take the gestalt of Beretta. Yeah. Except instead of a parakeet, a cockatoo. Sorry, sorry, cockatoo fans, and the eye of the sparrow. You make the private detective a truck driver who promises he can deliver anything, including in one very special episode, a group of supermodels. And so it's Grant, about, it's about a truck. It's about a trucker who has a pet as a monkey, right? Or has a right? pet as a monkey, or, or a monkey as maybe, a pet. Maybe, maybe the monkey owns him. <gasps> Why are we putting labels on everything? Do do do. It's a also, the Ape sequel. Also, this. Uh, lest we forget, Sheriff Lobo was a spinoff of BJ and the Bear. Sheriff what? Lobo. But what wasn't a spinoff? Right. Was the it sheriff. sheriff? Wasn't Sheriff Lobo a spinoff of BJ and the Bear? I think you're right, but I'll be honest. While I have seen an episode of BJ and the Bear, I've never seen an episode of Sheriff so, Lobo. So I was bored at work two years ago. <laughs> And I went on a deep dive on YouTube of Sheriff Lobo. Now, episode. by the way, if you're wondering, how was watching he, the opening of it? How was he bored at work? Once again, that was before that photo by Tommy Lee came out. <laughs> now he's booked up solid. I'm booked up solid. <laughs> hey, I'm just saying, it's called The Misadventures of Sheriff, Adventures Lobo. Of Sheriff Lobo. It is. It's a spinoff of, yes, absolutely right. Yeah. Uh, a spinoff of BJ and the Bear. Ran from be, 79 to 81. I'll be damned. And the full title, by the way, is The Misadventures of Sheriff Lobo. Not them regular adventures. Well, season one only had 10 episodes and season two had 15. So there's only 25 episodes. I don't know why I don't own every single one of these. Get out there and get it. Let's talk about monkey movies and TV well, shows. Well, I've been talking about BJ and the Bear. <laughs> now, hey, I do have a question. Why can't we agree that the best monkey movie of all time is King Kong? I mean, I like King Kong, but it's... It insists it, upon it. No, it's not a... It, it is a movie that has a monkey in it, but it is not, to me, a monkey movie, right? I mean, it is about much more than the monkeys, whereas Planet of the Apes is a monkey movie. It is about the monkeys doing... No, I, I, you lost me on that yeah, one. James, I can't get on you on that one either, man. It's about... It's get, about... It's you about get a, on you. Go ahead. No, it's funny. I wasn't going no. to say anything material. It's literally about a giant gorilla trying to live his life, and humans and uh, intervene, and he, he they kill him. I mean, it's about the gorilla. But it's, it's, it's Beauty and the Beast. No, the Beauty and the Beast kind of comes later. Now, I agree with Chad. I mean, it's a monkey out. I mean, it's a gorilla out in the wild, and these asshole white guys show up. Uh, knock his ass out, drag his ass all the way back to America, and get his ass killed because he didn't want to be there. Why yeah. is it always America? Why is it you? Yeah, that's, that's... Have you met Americans? Yeah, I don't know. Why, America but, sucks. Would it have worked if they would have dragged him back to Australia? Is there? That's a good question. Hey, Glenn. Uh, is there any monster that gets drugged back to Australia? Because Godzilla shows up, 
in Japan. No, there are a bunch of prisoners. Nobody wants to go to that prison <laughs> colony. No one wants to go there and oh eat their shitty Vegemite and be killed by everything because everything there was built to kill them. Because and you think that's what? Why, you, and, oh, yeah, so and, what your theory is basically? And is it other I love than you, attacking ben. our <laughs> other than attacking our good Australian colleagues who now will turn on us? No, of they're inevitable but guaranteed betrayal. Anyway, um. But no, seriously, do you think that's why no monster go? They're, they're like, no, 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 that place is full up on monsters. We don't have to go. As Joe says, everything here is evolved to kill. We don't need another Godzilla. <laughs> just, just leave Australia alone. If they had a Godzilla, it would be poisonous. <laughs> on, top, <laughs> on top of fire breathing or whatever that shit that comes out of Godzilla's throat. Atomic breath, I think, is it, 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 it's, it's the it's the scientific term. Yeah, I'm not going to take that shit from a guy who buttons his top button on his collar. I would have uh, not, but screw you. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So who goes first? Because honestly, I I there will be a couple I talk about, but there's not a. James is right. Planet of the Apes, one of my favorite films. I love the trilogy, uh, Dawn and Day and. Uh, uh, Night of the Living Dead. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I love those too, and I love most of the original Planet of the Apes movie. Even the ones that the cheap ones towards the end are pretty good. Yeah, I mean, I'll go first because uh, this actually, when we discussed this movie, when we discussed talking about this, this didn't make our, our my list until Joe and I were driving to help people who were uh, victims of the of the flood here in, in Kentucky. Project X. I love Project X. Yeah, we talked about it a lot on the way down. Yeah, because I we we both realized we didn't put that on we when we were talking about the movie it wasn't on our list. Yeah. James, did this did this make your list at all out of curiosity? What Project X? Yes, I haven't seen it. Oh, Seriously, man. you've never seen Project X? What were you doing as so. a kid? Uh, was it a Star Trek episode? You had other interests, right? No, I don't know why I asked that. No, not real. Uh, was it a Star Trek episode or a science fiction book? Yeah, that's, uh, it that's was, what I had. I don't. It it was a uh, it was Matthew Broderick's best film beside uh, before Godzilla and uh, Road to Wellville. <laughs> Oh. Okay. So I wrote uh, the Wellville's a good movie. No, it's so you so no, I can't believe you've never seen Project X, James. It's it's a it's honestly it's a pretty good movie and it's a good it has some good science fiction. Well, elements. now we don't remember. I don't remember it. I just remember liking it as a kid. Yeah, your point. You got a point. We may watch it now and I, go. I bet it doesn't hold up too well. I don't we need to get it we need to watch this again because I don't I just I really, this was one of my favorite movies as a, as a kid. Uh, it came out in 1987. Yeah. Um, it stars um, Matthew Broderick, Helen Hunt, Willie. That's the, who plays Virgil. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and William Sadler. Um, I don't remember him being in it. He's the villain. Huh. And if there's anybody who can play a, a, a cool villain. Yeah, no, I agree. I ha I really need to go. Boy, I don't have any recollection of that. Yeah, it's uh, directed by Jonathan Kaplan, um, which I did not know Jonathan Kaplan did Project X. <laughs> Just never looked that much into it. Um, but no, it's about um, the scientists who are running an air, uh, a top secret military experiment using monkeys to fly planes. Uh, and I believe Matthew Broderick uh, is kind of like a He's just a keeper of the monkeys to make sure the monkeys are, you know, taken care of. Uh, and he develops a, a bond with one of them, that being Virgil, played by Billy. <laughs> and by you the got way, quiet, they, by the way. You just I, I, you took a long pause. Why did you take a Jane pause? I'm, I'm still laughing because, uh, sorry, I'm looking at some of the names of the monkeys because there are a lot of monkeys in this. Uh, so Goofy is uh, Oko, yeah. is, plays Goofy. Karanja plays Goliath, and Luke plays Bluebeard. I could go on, but I'm not going to. Uh, but yeah, it's all about uh, Matthew Broderick and Helen Hunt uh, trying to save these monkeys from annihilation just because they're being they're being killed for these experiments. Uh, it is pretty heart wrenching. Um, it, there is a scene like where one of the older monkeys he gets into the test pilot to to like break the program, and it just slowly because uh, the the monkeys revolt. 
and uh the, and you just see this it's i don't know how they did it but you see the monkey just slowly uh just burn his 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 mind goes away I, I still remember that scene to this day um i just i just love project x and when i think of monkey movies it took a minute but i think of project x i still can't believe james you've never seen this movie I, i'm sorry Chad. no I'm it's just one of those down. staples but you've never seen war games uh, I've never seen War Games. No, I don't know yeah, how, how you do miss you war not games. see War Games. <laughs> Would you like to play a game, Chad? Would you like to? <laughs> Any second now, I'm going to hear Citizens Array. Citizens Array. He, 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 now, war now if you tell me you haven't seen Dabney Coleman's ultimate film of Cloak and Dagger, I I don't even know if we. Can I thought talk. you were going to say Modern Problems with Chevy Chase. James, I've never seen Cloak and Dagger. I've seen Cloak and Dagger. You've not seen Cloak and Dagger or War Games? Who no, hurt you, Chad? You should Who <laughs> hurt you. You really should watch War Games this weekend. What's the movie with uh, Dabney Coleman uh, where he's the father of the rich kids and one of them's played by Uma Thurman? I don't remember that. Uh, uh, yeah, I can't remember. Name I right. like a- I like his starring role with Matt Frewer in the Canadian production of Short Time where he thinks he's got a disease and he has to kill himself accidentally uh, on the job so his insurance will pay out and his kid can go to college god short time was awesome short time and right? by the way the, name, the dabney coleman movie with uma thurman is called where the heart is uh i think yeah. i may have seen scenes in that but i don't remember much about it yeah it also stars uh chris crispin glover and joanna cassidy it's a crazy cast but anyway so yeah monkey movie so yeah that's my first pick project x james Guys. You know, it's hard to talk about monkey movies without thinking. They just end your sentence there and walk out. <laughs> and we're done. And then, no. It's hard to, it's talk, hard about to talk about monkey movies without realizing the versatility of monkey films out there. Because we've talked about a couple already. Fantasy, action, adventure. But there's only one monkey film that turns me every which ba- way but loose. And that is, of course... Every, which, Every way, which way but you, loose. You can. Yeah, any which way you can. <laughs> any which way you can. Eddie Rabbit performs, of course, the great song, Every Which Way But Loose, which you're turning me, Every Which Way But Loose. But if you've never seen Every Which Way But Loose and thought, should a monkey drive a car? The answer is, of course, yes. yes. Left turn, Clyde. Yeah. <laughs> the plot to the movie, if you haven't seen Every Which Way But Loose. I haven't seen it since I was a kid. Oh, it's 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 a... It, it, You'll be like, is this a Clint Eastwood movie? Because of course it's a Clint Eastwood movie, but literally he plays a trucker that is also a bare knuckle brawler. Uh huh. And he's traveling the American West looking for a lost love, but also having to avoid both the police and a motorcycle gang that are out after him for revenge. And he's accompanied oh. by his manager, Philo, and his pet orangutan, Clyde. Left turn, Clyde. Go ahead, Chad. And by, I was just gonna say the biker, the the lead of the biker is John Quaid. Man, it, uh, perfect in that role. Uh but you guys are forgetting uh, Jeffrey Ruth Lewis. Gordon. Oh well, and also Ruth Gordon. Oh, is we Jeffrey haven't got Lewis. There. We yeah. haven't got we we well, I hadn't got to Jeffrey Lewis yet, but yeah, no Jeffrey Lewis and and Ruth Gordon. Yeah, Ruth Gordon's amazing in that movie. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, yeah, just completely foul mouthed, terrible old woman. But yes. Great. Uh, by the way, made on a five million dollar budget, went on to make a hundred and four point three million dollars. No, they're that's huge. insane. It was a huge, huge, huge hit. hit. They're a big success. Yeah. So, can I? Which one is the one where the Baker Gang gets covered in tar? I think, I think that's the sequel. Any which way you can. I don't know. See, so can I a little bit about this uh, and a couple of interviews when, and Eastwood doesn't do a lot of this in kind of retrospection, but they, you know, those are kind of come off as like that and like Pink Cadillac and a couple of them was like, hoo, 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 hoo. and he was like, you know, those movies made a lot of money and I don't blame him. I dropped my uh, Tommy Lee big dick energy. See, bring it back, bring it, it back. back. I dropped that big blue vein and say, yeah, $105 million, a lot of money. But I think that's one of those that was really successful and no one talks about it. No. I and honestly I can't remember anything about it. Do you all remember scenes? I can't I, so, I mean I I can remember I know, right, turn Clyde and things like that, but I don't I I remember Ruth Gordon, like there's scenes in it where she flips people off and stuff like that. And I remember watching because my dad loved Clint Eastwood. 
And he, of course, was sitting there and watch. If it's clean sweat, he'd watch it with me. And he would just say, don't do that. Don't do that. And I, I, I watched it as a kid. I've seen it since then. Um, uh, and, and by the way, when it first came out, it was the highest ranking movie of his career up to that point. It was the second highest grossing film of 1978. Phew. Um, and by the way, all Sorry, of that is... Right? All of that is with completely negative reviews. It was critically panned. Um, and, and, and the reviews included one that said, and let me quote this, this is the slackest and most harebrained of Mr. Eastwood's recent movie uh, movies. It's overlong and virtually uneventful, even though there are half a dozen cute characters and woolly subplots competing for the viewer's attention. This film is so awful, it's almost as if Eastwood is using it to find out how far he can go, how bad a film he can associate himself with. Still was a huge hit and got a sequel. Which makes me say, why aren't we making Murder Virgin 2? <laughs> Electric Boogaloo. Uh, you know, I will say, this is one of those, uh, so if you're a listener of the show and, and you know my history. Otherwise, watching- why are you on here? Yeah, if you if you listen, uh, you know my my history of of some of the crazier movies, like the fact that I saw uh, Return of the Jedi before I even saw it, before before I knew Star Wars and uh, Empire Strikes Back. Um, I think I saw uh, Evil Dead Two or Army of Darkness before I knew Evil Dead. I saw Army of Darkness before I knew Evil. Yeah, Dead. I saw Army of Dark. It was Army of Darkness before I knew Army Evil Darkness. Dead One and Two. Yeah. Um, I have a long history of 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 seeing sequels. And this is one of those other one of those cases because I loved any which way you can. I didn't know there was a, there was a one prior to this till years later, uh, and I really did love any which way you can. Um, and yes, I would uh, any which way you can is the one scene where they the bikers get covered in tar and they have to, and they end up losing all their hair because of it and they have to wear these crazy ass wigs. <laughs> it's such but, a cheap joke, but I loved it. And also to the fact that uh oh man, who does he uh, he fights William Smith. In any which way you can, and it's a big epic brawl. Any which it. way you can also made seventy million dollars in nineteen eighty. I bet that made some money. Well, I was say, and the thing about this is also is it wasn't just a movie event that involved a, a, a monkey. This movie put out a soundtrack that had two number one hits on it, or that became number one hits. One being, of course, the title track by Eddie Rabbit, "Every Which Way But Loose." But also Coca Cola Cowboy by Mel Tillis. But it also included Behind Closed Doors, which is a well known song by Charlie Rich. And other songs that went into the top five were I'll Wake You Up When I Get Home and Mel Tillis' Send Me Down to Tucson made it up to number two. And it also recycled songs from the 1960s, including Behind Closed Doors by Hank Thompson. So honestly, it may have been a quote unquote critical failure but obviously it made money and it was huge on the country music billboard charts for a soundtrack just to have that many i mean if you think about movie soundtracks and how many of them have that many hits go to the billboard charts i don't know the statistics on that but i would imagine it's pretty rare that you have a soundtrack pull that off and every so every which way you can besides being a monkey movie, was also this weird cultural phenomenon that nobody talks about it. Left turn, Clyde, indeed. And by the way, they're not directed by Eastwood. No. They're directed by two different people. James Fargo directed one, and sorry, I just... Yeah, and Buddy Van Horn, who's mostly known as a stuntman, he was, was, you know... He could have been the next Hal Needham, but he didn't didn't go that way. (laughs) No, um, no, uh, by the way, and... uh, this is only for people of a certain age, which I think most people who listen to us are of that age. Any which way you can in any way, any which way but loose is your typical Saturday midday movie that, you know, there's nothing on TV. You have three yeah. channels. And then that, that mid after Saturday, mid afternoon movie comes on and you're, you're sitting down to watch it even with commercials. It just, yeah, it, it, it pulls you in. Hey, by the way, he also directed The Deadpool, which is, I was watching that uh, the other day on HBO Max, as Chad talks about, you do some of those deep dives on HBO Max, it's real easy to do, and I hadn't seen it in forever, I was just waiting for Jim Carrey, it looks like a TV movie, it's awful now. Yeah. The Deadpool. I I, I haven't seen it, so I can't, but I've heard that it looks like a TV movie, and he also did 
He did pink Cadillac. Pink Cadillac. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yes, that's right. Pink Cadillac <laughs> and Deadpool. And I thought those were both directed by, and I was wrong. All right. Is it my turn? Yeah, it's your turn. Okay. So I'm going to go for a comedy because Chad and James haven't picked one yet. I was what? Yeah, I know. Are you uh, saying every which way but loose was a serious docudrama? I'm going to talk about Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back because th- he was of a certain age. Why is that not a? What are you giving me that look for? I, I'm 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 revisiting like uh, the Cars episode when every single episode, every movie we listened, you go, is that a really a car movie? <laughs> no, you're right because he only monkey does show up about midway though. Yeah. Okay, good. Keep going. And he is integral to the plot to the movie. He's he's yeah. a part of the movie. He yeah. moves the plot along. If our audience doesn't know what Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back is, I I just have a hard time believing anybody's listening to us right now who doesn't know Jay and Silent Bob can Strike can Back. I do this somewhere. Yeah. There's a there's a version of Chad that was like, I didn't know that was a movie. I only saw Jay and Silent Bob reboot. I thought that was the first one. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, it was before the reboot. Uh, Kevin Smith put all of his View Askew characters together and made this finally bigger budget film that had a monkey in it. And the reason it has a monkey in it, gentlemen, is because of all the shit we've just been talking about. Correct? Yeah. yeah. Kevin and F- Kevin Smith wanted a monkey in his movie because of BJ and the Bear, because of any which way you can, because of all these things. You have to have some sort of primate in your movie, and that's the reason. Also. When was the last time you guys watched Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back? I've uh, listened to the soundtrack recently. I can't I was, remember. I was say, it's probably been about five to six years. I can't remember the last time I listened to or watched Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. Uh, In fact, I can't remember the last time I watched any of the original Kevin Smith films. I watched Reboot, didn't care for Reboot. I like scenes in it, but overall thought it was... See, I watched Dogman like four or five months ago. I have so, seen. Uh, I do want to see time. Clerks three. I do too because I love Clerks too. Loved Clerks yeah. too. Yeah, yeah. I will. I, I will say, like, um, again, Kevin Smith. It, it, he is. He holds a special place in my heart. Uh, I still, though, uh, enjoy most of his movies. Um, yeah. So I, it, it's no tr- It's no trouble for me to watch those those movies at the drop of a hat. But I haven't watched them in years. Really Uh-oh. haven't. All right. Who's next? Um, well, since we did comedies, uh, I'm going to go different. I'm going to go monkey shines. An experiment in fear. <laughs> That's the title. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, Joe, I might have you. No, talk, well, have, gentlemen, why is that a terror picture? Now, if I would have wrote monkey shines, it would have been about this guy who trains monkeys to run a car wash. Can you it, imagine that? Just, oh, why don't you go if you found out now they fully, they're fully insured right and let me pick go ahead monkey monkey shines and it's these monkeys are trained to clean your car now they're safe they're insured they're fine but wouldn't you be more like your car clean if you knew some friendly orangutans we're going to handle that for you buddy and if they had a song maybe a song about a car wash playing oh yeah oh my god and then maybe if george carlin was selling weed outside the car wash yeah, no, all of this. I don't know why you wouldn't make Monkey Shines a monkey car wash picture. I know. How shiny is that? Well, it shines for the mo- Yeah, this writes itself. That what this movie's about, Chad? Yeah, pretty much. Oh, well, you, let's move on. You nailed right. it. So no, it. How is that an experiment in fear? That's an experiment in delight. Monkey Shines is one of those underappreciated Romero films that actually I watched a couple years ago. And it it's Romero paced yeah. because he's not in a hurry to get anywhere to tell you his story. No, but it's pretty good. And it's one of those ones that I always, I constantly thought as a kid that this was one of those Steve, I thought it was Stephen King. I don't know why I thought it was a Stephen King story. <laughs> it just, yeah. Um, but no, if you haven't seen monkey shines, it's about a, it's about a man who uh, becomes a quadriplegic after being ran over by a car while jogging with bricks in a backpack. Uh, and uh, they give him a trained monkey to help him, uh, you know, take care of himself. And the monkey is uh, psychotic, basically. Uh, and he just goes around uh, being a menace, killing people, killing everything in sight. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I, the, the, the main thing is, uh, is the cast. Because this is one of those weird movies where it, ha- it starred Jason Bay. 
I'm gonna, I don't remember how I don't know how to pronounce his name. I know, yeah, but that you're right, yeah. John Pankow and Kate McNeil. But the supporting cast, Stephen Bruce, Stanley Tucci, Janine Turner. I mean, this is a who's who of uh, actors who are amazing to are well very well known today. Uh and they had very like very bit roles in this movie. Uh but go ahead. Uh, William Newman, I, I was looking through the list. Um, he plays Doc Williams. I don't remember his part, but if you knew saw William Newman, you'd be like, that guy! Yeah. <laughs> Old guy with that square jaw. Who also played a sheriff in Leprechaun. He also was a law enforcement in the stand. He's also, it's, it's just what he did. I did not know that this was the first role for Stephen Root, was Monkey Shines. Did he talk about that on a podcast we listened to? I don't know. Hmm. I just, uh, I, when I, I briefly looked up something, and I was like, this is the first film. Oh, yeah. Just... That's the first trivia right there out of the gate. Oh, is it? Yeah. yeah. Um, but no, I just, I, I love this movie as a kid, especially when they went into the uh, POV mode uh -huh. um, of the monkey. I, I love this movie as a kid. I, I, uh, I haven't seen it in years. I just remember uh, I'm watching the I'm looking at the trailer now and that shitty beard on the guy after he comes out of the hospital. Yeah, it is terrible. But um, no, I just I, I thought this was a premier monkey movie because of the fact that it, it involves a, a killer monkey. I don't know how many other. Can you all think of another movie with a killer monkey? Because I can't other than, you know, like uh, what was that shitty? Well, it's not a monkey. What was that baboon? The one we watched, Ma oh, Smackma. Shockma. Smackma. Shockma. So Smackma. Yeah. Smack my bad boot up. Oh, man. Anyway, James, go ahead and talk about Shockma. <laughs> no, mistakes. no. I'm going to talk about a movie that was uh, written by the same guy that wrote uh, Every Which Way But Loose and Any Which Way You Can. So Joe talked about having different different directors but they were all written by the same person that would be jeremy joe kronsberg kronsberg as k-r-o-n-s-b-e-r-g however uh, kronsberg i believe anyway and i know what you're thinking how could he have done another ape movie after having those two hit films well evidently he thought i'm not sure about this but in my mind he thought obviously the reason people are coming to see this are these monkeys clint eastwood is a hack I guess, because he wrote another monkey movie that came out in 1982 called Going Ape. <laughs> Going Ape has an Elmer Bernstein score and stars Jessica Walter, Danny DeVito, and of course, Tony Danza. Tony Danza. And, I don't remember uh, a thing about it. Uh, don't, other than, uh, I don't remember other than Danny DeVito's beard. Okay, well, here's here's what you need to know about it. A rich circus owner agrees to leave his son, uh, which I believe is Tony Danza, the dollar estate, but only, only if he can protect the three orangutans for three years, for two years, two years after he dies. He has to make sure that, and for some reason, of course, Somebody hires a hitman to kill the orangutans because, of course, they would. That's who you got to keep them alive for two years. Hitman, a hitman is hired to kill the orangutans, and it's about the bungling hitman and his attempts to protect the orangutans from it. Tony Danza somehow got nominated. I'm sorry, not Tony Danza, Danny DeVito in it got nominated for a Razzie for worst actor. I don't know how that could ever happen. Long story short, uh, I don't know much about um, Jeremy John uh, uh, Kronsberg. I do know Jeremy Joe Kronsberg. Sorry, I do know. However, this was the end of of his uh, career. Uh, yeah, he he kind of tight. He kind of put himself in a corner of writing nothing but eight movies. Yeah, nineteen eighty one. He's no, he stopped being active in the industry. To my knowledge, he is still alive. So if you happen to hear this, Mr. Cronsberg, we would love to have you on the show. I would love to hear about your writing process. I made a quip earlier about Clint. I don't mean it, sir. Please come on our show and talk about it. I believe you're in your 80s now. I'd love to hear 
what the writing process was like in the late seventies and eighties and working with Eastwood. So all my quips aside, you were more successful than I am. You wrote three films, two of which are still talked about at least by people like us, less so going ape. But yeah. I will say, uh, just just a side note: his son is Gabriel Jarrett, who played Mitch in Real Genius. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know that, Chad. Thank you. But no yeah, problem. if you if, if you've never seen Going Ape and you want to see a movie, if you've ever wondered, Mitch, hold on, is Mitch the one who's this is no, it's Todd. Which one's the asshole prep? No, oh, Mitch is the I think is, is isn't he the main character in Real Genius? Yeah, that's well, the real the yeah that the real the main oh the young guy yeah the is one who's with Mitch? Al Kilmer Sorry. yeah his name's Mitch okay I couldn't remember you made me second guess myself I had to look it up. Well, I'm sorry. I prefer That's real right. genius. But no, so outside, I mean, probably Jeremy Joe Cronsberg, as Chad alluded to, I mean, he made a pretty sizable cultural impact between 1978 and about 1982, writing three monkey-based movies. I had to give him a shout-out for his last one. I'm not saying you should rush out and find Going Ape. I don't even know where it would be available. But it is a monkey movie. I wanted to pick one that a lot of people want to talk about, and it does have Danny DeVito in it, and I don't care if he was nominated for a Razzie. He's still Danny DeVito. You put some respect on that name. Hmm. All right, so I'm going to do three films together, and I know these are slightly cliche, and once again, I'm doing something the last 20 or 30 years. I'm not as obscure. But, guys, when do you remember the coming attraction, the preview trailer? for rise of the planet of the apes do you guys remember it yeah so i didn't know that they were really kind of I, I knew nothing about this movie till i saw the trade that trailer one that's pulling out and you see the eye and the eye looks perfect mm -hmm. do you remember this no i do well you just said you did but it, no, i was pulling, just yeah go ahead and i watched it and i thought that looks pretty good but i had absolutely positively no confidence in them making another damn planet of the apes movie nor did I have any burning desire to see another Planet of the Apes movie, gentlemen. Also, also with James Franco. Also with James Franco. But Rupert Wyatt made one of the best. I can't. I mean, truly, it's kind of a re the reboot, really, of it. I hate using the term, but it's true. Uh, started that trilogy, even though he didn't direct the next two. And Rise of the Planet of the Apes was amazing. And James Franco is not that bad in it. Of course, he is surrounded by Andy Serkis and John. Why can I think of John Lithgow's name? John Lithgow. And the is and the isn't the guy from Reaper in that and uh, Dale and Tucker versus Evil? Yes, but I can't remember his name. And Brian Cox is also in it too. I always forget. I love those movies and I'm kind of putting them together. After that, they made War of the Planet of the Apes. No, actually, I'm so sorry. It's Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. And Rupert Wyatt was, uh, I don't know why he left, but he did leave. And Matt Reeves, who gave us The Batman last year, gave us the next two. Dawn of the Planet of the Apes is another one where they just completely changed the cast, except for Andy Serkis. But we have Jason Clark, Gary Oldman, Kerry Russell. Once again, a fantastic cast. And the movie works, right? Yeah. They're going to screw it up. They're going to finish this trilogy and screw it up. No, no, no. War of the Planet of the Apes, once again, definitely different class cast this time. But we have Woody Harrelson as the bad guy. And it explains why they can't talk. And I just, for the most part... They're flawless. Can you besmirch? Can you say anything critical about them? They they're not overly fast. No, they work. You you the apes are three dimensional characters. No, I I agree. I enjoyed all. How three. do they work? I'm... How do they work? Why should that work? It should have never worked. And they were hugely popular. Yeah, no, I mean I agree. I, I they they should not have worked. I agree one hundred percent. But they did, and I enjoyed every minute of them. I did. Honestly, uh, for the most part, I mean, I need to stop saying honestly. I think Planet of the Apes itself is a fantastic film. I'm sure that it's one of the best science fiction films ever made. And I haven't watched it in a, in a while. I watched some of the sequels a few years ago when my kid was really small and he wasn't paying attention to the television. But... I think I'd like to line that up, at least the original, and then watch the 
the new trilogy. And I wonder if the new trilogy is better. I would say it is. I, 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 I will say this. And, it, and I'm, I, again, when, when you claim to love cinema, like I do love movies, love every bit of it. Uh, hey, I shouldn't, this sentence shouldn't come out of my mouth. Not a fan of the original plan of the Apes films. Why? I, I just never could get into them. Some of them are bad shit crazy. Ask James. Some of the sequels, they start talking about things. They got away with things for studio pictures because they cut the budget lower and lower every single time they made one. Yeah, I honestly, and they get a little dark and they get sinister and they let Roddy McDowell off a leash and do just do crazy performances. The later movies I still have not seen. I've, I've seen the first two and I just, the first one, uh, this falls into the, the I'm not a John Wayne fan. I'm also not a Charlton Heston fan. But and, he's God. Uh, or Moses. Just could not get, or yeah, I just, Which one is he? What's the all, of, all the, Anyway, I just couldn't get into any of them. I don't know. I think you're wrong, Chad. I think you've been sipping on a little bit too much of the Grape Juice Plus. <laughs> That's, where you That's an illusion, answer. kids. Look it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I like the movies. They're fun. I, I I would suggest them to most people. If you've never, if you need to go back and watch them, or I think you should. If you've never done it, go back and watch some of the sequels. A couple of them are bad shit nuts. They yeah. really are. They're starting. You're talking about underground dwelling people. Uh, they're talking to talk about. I mean, a lot of race is in there. James, back me up. I mean, a lot of what's going on in the 60s and 70s at that time is thrown in. It, oh yeah, they got away with a lot. There's a lot of metaphor. Well, even commentary on. You know, the idea of, of, I hate to say, I mean, it ties into race, but like taking people's kids and stuff, right? I mean, there's yeah. there, all of that is messed with in there about, you know, how, what can you do? What, what can you get away with in the name of science or in the name of understanding and the name of, I mean, yeah. And I think that's the thing is that the Planet of the Apes films, the original ones are, Obviously, they're connected to the modern ones, right? Because that's why it's Rise of the Planet of the Apes and War for the Planet of the Apes and all that stuff. Uh -huh. But realistically, it's almost like, to borrow a Joe Lewis line, like comparing the original Star Trek to anything that is it follows. It may be in the same universe, but without that connective tissue of the original, it doesn't work as well, right? Like, if, yeah. you, if, if you didn't know Planet of the Apes yeah. at all, then War of the Planet of the Apes wouldn't have the same emotional impact, right? Mm -hmm. But because we know X happens, then we can appreciate Y, and Y becomes more. Yeah. So. Right. All right. Who's next? All right. I'm going to save my, my final movie for an honorable mention. Um, so I'm going to go to a TV show. And uh, I, I remember, uh, again, this is one of those ones James gave me crap about for mentioning uh, in a previous episode. Uh, but I want to mention it again. We're talking about monkeys. Uh, I am a unabashed fan of Captain Simeon and the Space Monkeys. I don't. I don't have a problem with that. I don't, I don't, I don't, don't even know what it is. I know you've talked about it before, but I don't yeah. even really know what it is. Uh, no. So Captain Simeon and the Space Monkeys. It is a animated show from 1996. Uh, it lasted 26 episodes. Uh, it's about a NASA monkey that's shot into space, um, and an and an uh, alien race mistakes it for Earth like most uh dominant species they think it's the the most uh that the that he, he is the best one of them uh so they give him intelligence they turn him in, they give they turn him into a captain they give him a ship and they tell him to go fight their enemy for them uh and he ends up recruiting a bunch of other monkeys uh I, real quick i want to talk about the cast because the cast is kind of a weird combination of things uh it's uh, stars jerry doyle dom Herrera, maurice lamarch James Avery, who you know as Uncle Phil from Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Uh, Malcolm McDowell, Dom, did I say Dom Herrera already? I think so. Any, anyway, uh, David Carradine, Malcolm McDowell, David Warner, Renee Orba, join us, Frank Welker. An amazing cast in this cartoon. Uh, and it's about these, uh, uh, so he goes and recruits all these uh, different other types of monkeys, that, uh, all, each um, with their own unique um capabilities like he uh, recruits a gorilla who has anger issues who can hulk out uh th there's a ninja a lady ninja monkey uh, then he uh, he has a spider monkey who's kind of as good at uh, uh breaking into things uh, and then there's maurice lamarche's character um an orangutan with split personality disorder 
and he'll be like this really he's this really intelligent scientist but then he just breaks out and he goes completely batshit crazy uh and messes things up uh i love every aspect of this and it, the fact that it, it it combined characters from two of two amazing science fiction shows babylon 5 and ds9 uh and, well and star trek they combine them all in, and there's other characters from those shows who do minor appearances in the 26 episodes uh, they put all these different characters from babylon 5 and uh, the star trek shows into this animated series about monkeys fighting space villains mm. uh, i loved every I, I really do love this show i have i, I was actually uh, joe talked about being bored and watching bj and the bear i actually got bored on youtube and uh, one day at work and, and just marathoned every episode of captain simeon while i was doing my my, uh, my other duties and i just I, I, there was times where i caught myself just watching it on youtube and not doing work so mm -hmm. I, I i do love captain simeon i know neither one of you have never seen it and have nothing to say about it but Sorry. i have oh, no no i've actually mostly. seen some of it now because it did have so much cast from i love babylon 5 i love star trek obviously so i've yeah. seen i saw i finally got found the pilot where i could watch it the first episode yeah. no it's 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 better than it has any right to be yeah i mean even me as somebody that is in my 40s i can say yeah it's way better than it has any right to be. <laughs> Uh, and I believe they have like a computer that 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 that's supposed to be really intelligent, and that they mess it up and it goes completely crazy. If I'm not mistaken, it might be voiced by Jeff Bennett. I can't remember correctly, and I'm sorry. Uh, but yeah, he's a uh, he plays this haughty toddy uh, British act has this British snotty accent. Uh, the computer does. So yeah, I just I loved every minute of it. James, you know what? We watched Shockma. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and we were not exactly overwhelmed. Roddy McDowell is, of course, Roddy McDowell, and God bless him. Uh, but I was thinking, isn't there, shouldn't there be a movie that sounds like Shockma that might actually not suck? And I must admit, I haven't seen this film, but knowing that we have Australian colleagues, maybe they can fill us on the film. But I, I, I read the description of this film. It's directed by Australian director... Richard Franklin. It's a British production, but it stars in in, a, in in what I assume is the Roddy McDowell type role in Chakma. It stars Terrence Stamp and Elizabeth Shue, a really big shoe. Elizabeth <laughs> Shue. Um, it's called Link, and Link is the story that's from of, the eighties. Yeah, yeah, nineteen eighty six about a super intelligent. But malicious chimpanzee, who is oddly enough played by an orangutan, but who are we to split hairs? Uh, that literally, uh, they it, basically he learns he's going to be euthanized, and he starts stalking the people that can kill him. Richard Franklin, as the director, said he envisioned it as the Jaws of angry monkey movies. <laughs> And I've never wanted to see a movie more now. I don't know if we can find Link anywhere, gentlemen. I think I've seen parts of it, but I haven't seen it in a long time. But it was, uh, uh, again, Elizabeth Shue and Terrence Stamp are the main starring cast. Um, directed by Richard Franklin. Screenplay by Everett DeRoche, um, who, who also made movies such as The Long Weekend, Snapshot. That is the weirdest illustration of a monkey on that movie poster. Uh, I know, right? Uh, but anyway, yeah, the screenwriter, unlike the previous screenwriter I talked about, made more than just monkey movies, made several, has tons of credits to his name. Um, but I must admit, having sat through Shockman now, I think we should give Link a try, and we should be the first podcast that does a blow-by-blow -blow comparison. But I have a feeling Link <laughs> can't be any worse. Joe, do you um, know, James, do you know what else the director of uh, Link did? No. Cloak and Dagger. Yeah. Oh, really? Yep. <laughs> I did not see. I learned something new today. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah. So I've never seen Link, I will admit. But when we were talking about monkey movies, this is one that I actually was like, you know, I would actually like to see Link. I, I Given that we did watch Shockman, that I now own Shockman, uh, I think I, I probably should seek out Link uh, and do my due diligence there. Plus, to be honest, it's got Terrence Stamp in it. You can't go wrong with Terrence Stamp. I mean, mm. he is the limey. He's done a lot of other stuff that I've really enjoyed. Um, I still think we got robbed of a um, of Chancellor Valorum in Star Wars. That's actually one of my biggest critiques of the prequel is you threw away Terrence Stamp. 
Uh, I heard that he didn't get along with uh, Mr. Lucas. But anyway, the other thing that's notable about this film, though, is, gentlemen, do you know who was going to play the scientist or who they wanted to play the scientist? No idea. Who? But before Terrence Stamp, they wanted Anthony Perkins. Hmm. Anthony Perkins obviously did not do it. We got Elizabeth Shue and a bunch of other... Uh, we got Terrence Stamp instead with Elizabeth Shue. But there you go. That was actually the plan as it goes along. Uh, but yeah, now I'm actually uh, I want to do it. I also should say, though, if you are looking at Link, it does have nudity in it. I don't want anybody to want a good PG uh, murderous monkey movie. This isn't it. It does have nudity in it. Right. All right. Mine for my last one is a movie that was actually came out in the mid nineties and I remember getting rave reviews, but I don't remember anything happening with it. And I don't know that I've ever seen it. And guys, you are, this movie had Thora Birch, who I had a huge crush on later when she was older, Harvey Cattell, Mimi Rogers, Christopher McDonald. It was produced by Ridley Scott. You guys ever seen monkey trouble? No. You ever heard of it? Uh, yeah, I have heard of it. Yeah. It's written and direct, directed by Franco Amuri, who did a movie that I actually liked Oh, yes, I, I've heard of Monkey Trouble. Yes, yes. But I've never seen it. Have you? No. The f- director did something called Flashback. You guys ever saw that? Oh, yeah, with Dennis Quaid and uh, De- yeah, the, uh, Dennis, Ho- Dennis Hopper and Kiefer Sutherland. Oh, Flashback. <laughs> I'm thinking of Switchback, aren't I? Switchback. Wrong yeah. movie. I love flashback with Dennis Hopper and Kiefer Sutherland. Same guy. So I need to check this out. Anyway, it's about a monkey who gets into trouble, who is actually a thief. And Harvey Keitel plays a, a, a gypsy. Why haven't we seen this? I, I, because it's a Harvey cheap Keitel, 90s you know, movie. I'm, 90s. That's why I said 90s, didn't I? Oh, I don't know. I thought I heard 80s. Stupid headphones. Harvey Cattell has played all sorts of roles from Nazis to, I mean, give the man his yeah, due. He's, to Nazis he's, to a uh, other, yeah, to, to, well, a, I, to a bad lieutenant. Well, no, I was about to say, uh, isn't the appropriate term Romani instead of Gypsy now? I, I'm yeah. just being fair. Gypsy is very Romani. derogatory. Yeah. Wow. Sorry. I'm, yeah. Just, I'm just saying, uh, we need to be aware. I want to yeah. be the number one podcast among the Romani population. Right, actually, that would be great for us. Yeah. Seriously. All right, let's wrap this up. What else we got? You guys got uh, any my, more? Well, my I honorable keep... mention, my honorable mention, uh, and I, it, if it, if I didn't have Captain Sammy in to briefly talk about, I was going to talk about Monkey Bone. I, I figured Monkey say, Bone. I was I shocked. I put it on my list because you were going to do Well, that, and I'm not a fan. I, it was it was on my list, but I wanted to talk about Captain Sammy, and um, yeah, I love Monkey Bone. Uh, with him, uh, directed by Henry Selleck. Uh, it's a, a Henry Selleck, most people know for um, other things. That movie is visually stunning, and that's I mean, it is amazing. I, I love this movie, I do. Um, uh, it's about a it's about a cartoonist who goes into a coma and he ends up in this weird, uh, like real uh, uh limbo area mm-hmm. uh, between heaven and hell, uh, and he is being uh, basically uh uh helped by his uh cartoon creation of monkey bone yeah and it's about uh and uh, you know it's i I can't give it and plus it has the amazing bridget fonda in it (laughs) who is like my crush of all time probably is bridget fonda um but uh um yeah i just love monkey bone i do i I don't want to talk too much about it because we're trying to wrap up but it 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 is an amazing film i don't I, i don't i don't know why it doesn't get enough credit today uh, I, I I just do enjoy it. All right, James. I'm gonna uh, there, there's there's technically four movies I need to mention. So I'll mention <laughs> one though. One is how many did he say? What four. four? But hold on, oh. here, bear me out. One is actually three. Three is actually one. I should say. Uh the most valuable primate MVP uh, franchise. Oh my god! There are three of those, gentlemen. And the reason I'm mentioning this is I haven't seen a one of them. I didn't know there was three till I started researching this episode. See, Chad, the first one is MVP, Most Valuable Primate. Now, that's about the monkey learning to play hockey. Hockey. Right? Yeah, do you know what MVP2 is? It's not Most Valuable. Do you know what that's short for? 
Mm-mm. No. That's most vertical primate. Now that's when he learns to skate, uh, to serve, uh, uh, skateboard, and he's doing all those tricks. You see, he gets vertical. He was drinking that Mountain Dew, getting vertical. You see, Chad. Uh, and then MVP three actually, oh, it's a twist, Chad. That actually stands for most extreme primate because nobody cares about the letters anymore. <laughs> And that's when he gets into extreme sports. I wanted to mention that. Isn't skateboarding extreme sports? It's not extreme enough, Chad. I don't know. I don't if know. If you're what not happened. drinking a Mountain Dew while you're doing it, it's I not extreme. I don't know, Chad. I've not seen any of the movies. I just, as I started to research, literally all three of those came up of if you're talking about monkey movies, you got to talk about this franchise. And I'm like, A, I'm now mad that's a franchise. B, why can my no talent self not get anything launched? And C, why am I. St- listing all my faults and by the way it isn't mvp it's mxp i'm sorry but it's still part of that universe chad if you were doing the avengers infinity war of monkey movies you would have to include that you know what Um, you also got you know what you also got to mention what is the production the production company for the mvp movies i don't know what is air bud entertainment oh oh well of course now why didn't they cross over (laughs) <laughs> oh my god one of them could have drove but it's not the monkey see it would have been a twist what's a twist anyway and uh J- joe james you forgot about the fourth are you kidding me out the, the, the movie list i only listed three I, do i well, need to correct a website chad well because it's not called mvp spy mate a funny oh, spy I'm... chimp team with spy friends smart daughter to stop the bad guy i consider that it stars because... emma roberts right yes and I Barry see. Bostwick and <laughs> Richard Kind. Poor Richard Kind. Richard Kind <laughs> has actually been one of those people that has been in Mystery Science Theater 3000 movies playing a wizard in uh, Quest of the Delta Knights, I believe. Check it. Check it out. Holy David shoot. Warner's in that as well. This was one of Pat Morita's last films. They can't all be winners, kids. Anyway, there is one more movie that I actually love that I need to mention, and the monkey that is in it is actually only in it, only in it briefly, but plays a pivotal role. And that's that monkey that eats dates in Raiders of the Lost Ark. Yeah. If that monkey didn't stop them from eating dates, that movie would have ended a lot sooner. Okay, Joe? I don't have a damn thing to add after that other than Kong Skull Island has a really cool soundtrack. What about the monkey from Pirates of the Caribbean? Oh, that's true. He's an undead monkey. Yeah, yeah. I He's cool. Think I was, he did, yeah. He's cool. All right. I, I'd have a beer with that guy. You know what I'm saying? I'd vote for the president. And by the way, uh, as we wrap up, if any of our listeners chime in which none of you all ever do but if any of you go well why didn't you mention marcel from friends screw you yeah i agree <laughs> I love right. I, my favorite episode Don't by the me. way one of my favorite interviews with uh uh, uh david schwimmer david schwimmer is how much he hated that flipping monkey yeah just hated it that's the only thing david schwimmer was worth <laughs> is him telling a test telling us how much he hated that monkey this has been Bonehead Weekly. Thank you for paying attention to our minkies. And the best monkey movie of all time is Head. Go ahead. We were on a break. Head. Monkey movie. Check it out. Yeah. I, yeah. Grrrr. <sighs>